things and never our deliver especially when it comes to the global money accounts. What penalty measure are you to have for like, plenty of those people who just came out? And if there is not, how can you address that? So, uh, thank you. My name is Ines Reeves, Soko Ariko for News Radio. My question to the CSF boss, with these discrepancies, Lidl, what is or what are strategic measures put in place to avoid these discrepancies in the nearest future? Thank you. Thank you. And I will start with the last one um, from my good friend. Um, that's a very good question. So uh, our vision is divided into two parts. The first one in the immediate term is to make sure we have, we give integrity to the payroll, we give integrity to the white folks, making sure that we don't have square pairs in round holes, making sure that there's a merit-based system. And people who are on the payroll are people who are working and receiving just pay. That's our first overarching goal for the immediate term. Then, for the medium to long term, we are going to take measures to address this situation so that it's not repeated. So that after all, another thing you will not come and stay stand here and say that the my predecessor Jokai bloated the payroll, employ people fraudulently. No, we have to put a system to freeze that so that the system works for everybody. How do we want to do that? In the medium to long term, we are going to establish what you call human resource management in one place. So how does that work? We're going to design a platform. That platform will have all the human resource operations modules. For example, pension. You will have a pension module. The CSA and NASCAR will share viewing rights. NASCAR will be able to see it. CSA will be able to see it. But the only difference is that CSA will have absolute administrative rights, meaning we will control it 100%. So that when any of our patriotic employees retire and they are supposed to receive pension, they can go right there and fill out their pension form, upload their picture, and just by a click, it goes to NASCAR. That employee doesn't have to go through what he or she, others are going through right now. They have to take files, they have to go stay in queues for days, sometimes they don't even get processed, they are frustrated through the process, sometimes they don't even get their pension processed. So we will curtail that. We will have that online. Part of the platform, another module will be the employment system. You go online and have the pen online. Fill out the pen online. Attach your photo online. And with one click, it goes to the right department at CSA. CSA processes it, we process it, and we make sure that when it's approved, you are duly provided your company. So that you have that record. And you know what your rights and benefits are. So that employment module will be available to all the spending entities, 103 spending entities. However, nobody will have the right to add anybody or remove anybody, only the CSA. So that there is accountability, there's transparency. Anything happens to any employee, it's CSA that will have to account because CSA is the only entity that is recruiting, that controls that model. On that platform, we will also have performance management system. So that I, as a DG, I can sit from the comfort of my desk and look at the individual employee account right before me. I can navigate to the Ministry of Education and see which of the teacher in Wokonji there and see how much the question is paid and go to the payroll and see the question pay slip and see everything. The Ministry of Education will be able to see that. But the only difference between me and the Minister will be that I will have the administrative rights. The Minister will not be able to change anything on that platform. When we institute that measure for all the human resource movements, 
in one place. Nobody would be able to sit in a corner as it was done a few years ago on their phone and call their auntie's son and say, oh, hello, I know you've been out of job for long, but I'm able to put people on the payroll, so give me your name, give me your mobile phone number, and they put the person in there, and that's how we ended up with what we have. So nobody will be able to infiltrate that system, the human resource management, in one place. But people have concerns. How about our people in the rural areas? People are concerned that they don't have the infrastructure. So how will they access the platform? So when I was at the Elections Commission, I was part of a team that worked and built 19 magisterial offices across this country. The National Elections Commission is one of those institutions that is really decentralized. It's a television that is decentralized. We develop a model and we use that model, I replicated it at the 19 magisterial areas. The offices in each magisterial area are the same. They are all the same. It has the offices, has the sitting place, has the communication room, has a warehouse. We are bringing that same vision to the CSA. Across our far regions, we are going to develop a model for an office, all encompassing. And we are currently engaged with some of our partners. Graciously, I've had meetings with many of our partners already, and I've been sharing this vision with them. Some of them are considering this vision in their long-term plan, and that's why it's part of our medium to long-term plan. We will have a model that we will replicate at our far regions building the offices and everything and make sure that we implore some of the best minds, experts, technicians, subject matter experts, not brothers and sisters that we just seconding to those offices, no. People who will be able to provide professional services to all our employees across the country. The same services we are providing online, they will be able to provide those services in person. So our approach would be a hybrid approach, a hybrid approach, both virtual, where we have the platform, the people who have access to the infrastructure, they will be able to do all their stuff online. So as you can see today, when you, you want anything from CSA, you have to take all the folders and get in car and run to CSA. No. Once we institute that measure, you stay right here at administering your office, you hop onto the platform. It's going to be available to you people. You go to the platform and do what you are supposed to do, and we as CSA will receive it. It's such a system that we're going to institute after we conclude the payroll integrated process. So those are the vision, that's our vision divided into two parts that we have, and that's how we address your problem. You, you raise a very good uh, uh, concern, and that's why I spent some time on your question. So I hope I was able to address it. So mobile money accounts, he's asking what we're going to do with mobile money accounts. People who got mobile money accounts for them, uh, like they having uh, four or five persons having one mobile money account that all the salaries are going into, which even signifies that all the people on the payroll without one mobile money account may not even be receiving the money. That's somebody who not associated with the entire payroll who is sitting somewhere and receiving the money while those five persons are working. That's the likelihood, that's the kind of thing that we have. So, if these people do not come to be verified, I will put them in one category. The 122 associated with the mobile money, the 166 associated with the share bank accounts. If those people don't come to be verified, we will launch further investigation and we will include the Ministry of Justice to go after them if they exist, or those who orchestrated that and are benefiting from it, exploiting that spoiled system, must be prosecuted. So the actions we are taking today is just the first step in our direction. We're not gonna let it lose. Even if you don't come for verification, we are going after the people who set that up. They have to be able to explain to the Ministry of Justice, it's not in my area, that's not in my purview, to handle legal matters. We refer the matters appropriately to the Ministry of Justice to deal with that. And that would fall in the purview of the Solicitor General. 
So, um, Joe, you asked question about walking away um, uh, in a frustrated manner because you worked for long, you did not receive your pay. Joe is a classic example of exactly what I'm talking about. Joe's name is on the payroll, but Joe's bank account or his mobile money account is not associated with his name. Different person's name on the payroll, receiving Joe's salary. Joe, how long did you work for? I worked for about one year. Uh, Joe, do you want to come and stand beside me a little bit so that the people can see what we're talking about? Because you have a perfect okay. example of what we demonstrated. So this is the great Joe Willie, I know him. He worked for the Ministry of Information, Culture, Affairs, and Tourism. Joe got frustrated because he worked for a year. He was never paid. Meanwhile, his name was on the payroll. But you had a different account number associated with his name. Somebody sitting somewhere that has nothing to do with the job he's doing received his pay for a period of one year. So Joe is an example of the 166 or 122 that we talked about. So those kinds of discrepancies on the payroll have to be removed. And this is what we're talking about. Telling the Liberian people, questioning them to not give in to, to people who intend to exploit this process and use them. I will repeat, we have our saver servants in place. We are aware that they are working and receiving their legit salaries. Many of these names that we are removing, we are going to remove from the payroll, are names representing ghost employees. An example of ghost employee is the person who has been taking Joe's salary for one year. So Joe, that's what I can say. And when the measures we're taking, we definitely address that problem. So that you are legitimately working for the Liberian government, you should be receiving your salary. Because you are qualified, because you're committed, you're dedicated, you have done this for so many years, the ministry believes in your expertise, you must be paid correctly. That's what we're talking about, the merit-based system. So James, James, you talk about legitimate individuals on the payroll, and you want me to give you a total number of who are the legitimate individuals. This is impracticable, because right now we have not even cleared the discrepancies from the payroll. So we don't even know the exact number of who sure of our employees are until we have of legitimate uh, employees in the sorry in the public service, and this is the total number of fictitious or uh, ghost names that we have removed from the payroll, and this is the value amount, and everything will provide that to you. But right now, it's going to be impracticable to tell you that. So. Uh, uh, Momo, Momo talk about ghost names and you talk about uh, deterrent. This is very important. I already answered your question, talking about deterrence. So uh, we're not just going to let go people who will not come to be verified. We are also going to follow them, uh, uh, tracing the origin of these discrepancies. Because definitely I agree with you when you say that there are people who are responsible for putting these names on the payroll. It is true. So if these people don't come during the verification period, we are going to go after those who instituted these discrepancies. And it's not in our place to do that, so we will appropriately communicate with the Minister of Justice so that they can be able to handle that. Then, Anthony, you talk about ghost names, um, whether or not they completed the payment process. Your answer is a resounding no, they are ghosts. So how did they complete the payment process? That's not possible. I'm not sure what they did. And, and that's why we don't even know. That's why we are making sure that those who are legit but don't have their payments completed, they must have it completed so that we are able to delineate, to know the difference between the ghost and the legitimate employees. That's what the exercise is intended for. Uh, Domingo, you're asking question about which harm. What are we doing so that uh, the people uh, don't think that what we're doing is a witch hunt. Uh, I cannot say it more than what I have said. I can't overemphasize it. I keep cautioning our people and I keep telling them that this is void of any political persuasion. Uh, this is not politics. That is why everything I say here, I always put the aspect of the law. If it is the I creating the CSA, I make the reference. If it is the civil service standing orders, I make the reference. If it is the human resource management policy, I make the reference. 
in my second appearance, I brought all the instruments constituting the legal framework for the God to save our service. I showed them to all of you one by one. That's our guiding, that's our set of guiding principles. That's what we are guided by at the CSA. Anybody at the CSA attempting to do anything outside any of those rules, then you are not part of the CSA. Because our intent here is to make sure that we perform to meet the expectations of the Liberian people, that we do the right thing. The arrest agenda is something we are committed to. It has rule of law, rule of law. So everything we do must be consistent with the rule of law. And we are committed to doing that. So that's the last question I've answered. And once again, uh, Honorable Ministers, uh, it's really an honor for me always to be given the opportunity. I know the, uh, the, the, the magnitude of what we are doing. Please permit me to also say this. I have been receiving a lot of threats. Uh, some of them you have read on Facebook, on my posts. Many of you have seen it. I have uh, screenshot those threats. Some of them coming to me in my personal mail and they're saying all sorts of things to me and my family. They've involved my wife, they've involved my innocent boys. Uh, I get it on a daily basis, and I have informed the IG about it. I screenshot some of the messages and send it to the definite IG. So uh, I'm just letting you know that what I'm doing here is from my personal conviction. That's who I am, that's who my late dad taught me to be, to always do the right thing. I've never departed from that. Those of you who know me, uh, I keep uh, relationships, but that's more of the professional responsibility that I've had. I've always tried to delineate, to separate those, and there is nothing that's going to stop me from doing this job. I gave the President His Excellency my word, my commitment, that this is what I want to do for my nation. This is the country I love. I've never taken um, uh, any citizenship of any country anywhere. The only country I know is Liberia, and I remain committed to Liberia, and I will prove that by my work. And whoever is involved with those threats they are sending, I want to assure them that they got a very long time to send those threats. Very long time because I'm on bending in this national cause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Director General of the CSA. We would like to add our voice to the DG voice.